Welcome everybody to today's video. Um, I feel like it's been a while since I made a video, um, but I had some questions recently about mom having allergies and what is safe to take when you have allergies. And I have talked before about medications and breastfeeding, and I think I've probably touched on like allergy medicines, but I thought that it might be a good um, <clears throat> discussion for a video. Just strictly on allergies and what you should avoid and then maybe what you can try. Um, so when I was asked, the first thing, I didn't really know any details, but um, I was asked whether or not it's safe to take a allergy medicine if it will affect milk supply. Now, it's there's nothing wrong with taking an allergy medicine. It's not going to affect your baby but certain um, medications can affect your milk supply. And usually anything that has pseudoephedrine in it or um, any kind of decongestant is going to affect your supply. So Claritin by itself may not, but then Claritin D could. So anything that is supposed to um, decongest or is for congestion, that is that will affect milk supply. So, when I was asked the question, then um, that was the mom's issue, and it was really, really bad. The congestion, um, she says, was very bad. Now, for me, I know I cannot stand it when I cannot breathe. Like I, I, it's like the worst part of a cold, and I won't suffer. I, I go buy the sinus sprays, um, the nasal mist, like the Afrin, um, because I cannot. I have to breathe. And I know like doctors don't recommend you taking it more than seven days, I think, in a row or whatever. Um, but I take it because I have to be able to breathe. I just, I can't suffer. So a nasal mist like that is okay to take. Um, that will not affect your milk supply. So if you're congested and you cannot breathe, you can take a um, any type of saline. You could just do regular saline. Um, I mean, it's a nose spray. Or you can take something like Afrin, something that you can, that is meant to kind of like um, cool cool the inflammation because it's very inflamed in there. Um, but of course, they don't recommend you taking it more than seven days in a row. So that's something for you to decide how you're going to do it. Um, so what I did was I went online like everybody and I did some research. And of course, I've talked to you guys about research as well and how important it is to find your information from an accurate resource as well as like an up-to-date one. So you don't want something that's extremely old. And if it is older, at least it's from a reputable site. So if it's .gov, .edu, .org, then those are pretty reputable sites. So if that's where you're getting information from, that is um, pr should be pretty reliable and safe information. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Um, I will put the link to this article um, in the description below so that you can go read it yourself. Um, I'm not going to go into every single thing it says because we would be here forever if I tried to do that. But I'm going to focus strictly on congestion just because I feel like that's the one thing you can't take medication for um, because, of course, like I said, it will affect your milk. So I'm going to focus on those on that, on the, no, the head, and, head and chest congestion and um, mention a few things that you can do um, and then you can go look I'll put the link in the description as well as uh, medications um, let's see the link for sorry I just it's for medications and mother's milk I'm gonna put that uh, in the description as well although if you go to this link you'll see it um, close to the bottom of medications gener generally regarded as safe general guidelines. So at the bottom of that, um, it gives you like a hyperlink to click on and you can go and check out the different medications and whether they're safe. So you're, you're wanting to treat only the symptoms you have. So trying to avoid medications that have more than, you know, more symptoms that, that it's treating than what you necessarily are suffering from, if that's possible. And also, um, it mentioned possibly taking medication right after you nurse, just so that it makes it, it gives it some time to go through your system. Um, if you would 
were to take the medication and then nurse right away. It might not be as much yet, but it could. So probably just right after you breastfeed, you could take a medication and that would be like the safest time. Um, again, this is only medications that are safe to take while breastfeeding, um, just as a, a precaution, I guess. So um, we're going to start with head congestion, and these are some natural remedies. There is a little bit, um, of course, a few other things in there as well, but um, just some things that you can do. We're going to start with the head congestion. So it talked about using a saline nasal spray. So um, definitely that's safe, and I don't know if a regular just plain saline nasal spray has any... Um, I don't know if it says you can only use it for a certain amount of time. I'm not sure. I just know that the nasal sprays that are have a medication in it, um, those they, they, they don't recommend you taking for a long period of time. Uh, but sometimes you can take that just to kind of get through the worst or while you're feeling bad and then maybe not take it as often. I don't know. It, again, that's completely up to you how you decide that you want to do these treatments. So nasal sprays are safe. Um, I also want to mention the neti pot because a lot of people have experienced um, a lot of relief using the nasal pots. Personally, me, I wouldn't touch a nasal pot, <laughs> but not our neti pot, not because I think it's bad, but because I just feel like I'll, I feel like I'm drowning. I don't know. I can't imagine sticking anything in my nose, but I know my husband's done it. Um, I've seen many people on YouTube do it. Uh, I've talked to people, they've used it, and they really like swear by it. So if that's something that you um, are willing to try, I would definitely have that. Um, from what I know, there's not like a, you can use it as much as you need it. So, and you're using just saline um, solution. Then there's also steam treatment. So you could take a really warm shower. Um, I know that, now this talks about, um, taking a boil in a pot of water. And I don't want to, I don't want to recommend that just because I know there's been some controversy over it. And so I really just want to be like, what I would suggest is you can boil a pot of water and, you know, leave that steam in the house and drop a few um, oils in it like eucalyptus. Um, it mentions sage, balsam, um, peppermint, you know, you can, anything that has that uh, minty, I don't even know the, I forget the word they use, but that can a lot of times help with the congestion. So you, what I would suggest is like going into a bathroom, shutting the door, running the, a shower, because then you're less likely to deal with a burn. They just recommend, you know, they they're worried about burning yourself. So that was the old thing where you boil water and then you put like a towel over your head and you lean over the steam. But they're not really recommending that anymore, at least from what I read. And so I'm not going to recommend that. I'm just going to recommend a steam shower, going somewhere, shutting, going into the bathroom, shutting the door and so forth. Um, it mentions putting two inches of apple cider vinegar in a pan and heat it until it begins to steam and to inhale the vapor. If the vapor is too strong, add a little water, repeat as needed. So I've never tried that. This is a home remedy. Um, it is something that you, I guess you could look into. Uh, and then it mentions essential oils. Now I'm going to say, you know, essential oils, some people think that you have to go buy the really expensive essential oils. Um, from the research that I've done, there are some out there that are, that still work just as good and don't cost as much money. Like you can get some eucalyptus oil for $5. Um, I get mine at an Asian store, <clears throat> but I've heard that, oh, what is the brand at Target? Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, that it's pretty good and that runs about five, six dollars for a bottle, I think even a little less. So you can try that. Um, now, for all the people that love essential oils and maybe are like really into that and, you know, have their opinion about, you know, the quality, we're just talking about getting some relief. Eucalyptus oils, um, peppermint oils, 
those are things that honestly, whether you're, it doesn't matter. Those are going to help clear out um, because of the um, eucalyptus in it and the mintiness of the peppermint. I just, I forget the word that they used. Anyway, so you can put that on a cotton ball and hold it near your nose. Um, to just kind of breathe in deeply. Um, you can drop it in a bathtub and take a warm bath. Um, you can use a diffuser and drop it in the diffuser and just sit near that. Um, do not use the oil in the nose. So don't stick it in the nose because it can cause swelling. Do not use peppermint oil or menthol. That's the word I was trying to <laughs> come up with. Menthol, one of the main components in peppermint oil. Um, or camphor on or near the breast where baby might ingest it. And that is definitely um, something that I would say about any oils. <clears throat> Again, um, for the safety purposes, anything with menthol in it that can burn, try to keep it away from the sensitivity of um, the nipples itself would burn you, but having it anywhere near the baby. Like I use peppermint oil and you just have to be careful because you don't want it anywhere near where it can burn. So you don't want it to burn the baby. Um, uh, let's see. So anywhere, and that's the other thing is don't put it on skin where the baby's going to be. So um, sometimes you might think to put your eucalyptus oil on your chest, um, but you might want to avoid that. Or if you are like cover up, if you're going to hold the baby so the baby doesn't get any of that on the baby and possibly um, we don't want to affect the baby at all, do anything, harm the baby. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so this is one of the things, the reasons why they don't recommend like putting on a young child or, you know, taking that extra precaution is that there have been cases where direct application of the menthol or camphor products like Vicks Vapor Rub to the baby's skin has resulted in severe breathing difficulties and even liver problems. So um, just staying away from that. And there is some, there is a hyperlink here as well that you can click on and go look at um, things that you can use for your baby, you know, if they're suffering. Um, they talk about cayenne pepper, sprinkling it on your food. Um, or in a glass of water, and drinking fenugreek tea, which also increases milk supply, but that is supposed to help relieve head and, and chest congestion. Um, so those are some things that you can do to just kind of help relieve the congestion. Um, the Afrin type nose spray, those usually work really well. Um, any of those types of oils, eucalyptus, peppermint, anything with the menthol, that those are going to work well, diffusing them, um, you know, finding a way, like sticking it in the bath and taking a bath, anything that can help you to inhale it. But again, taking precautions because you don't want your baby to inhale it and you don't want to um, get it on your baby's skin. Um, let's see. So then there is chest congestion. Um, so there's a something called anise steam treatment. Anise is A-N-I-S-E. And this is dried, um, this is a dried herb. And it says, boil a pot of water, remove from the stove, add about three teaspoons of dried anise, drape a bath towel over your head, which we're not gonna do that, um, and breathe deeply. And also it mentions drinking the fenugreek tea again to relieve the head and, and chest congestion. So um, the anise steam treatment, again, um, you, you can do that and just not put a towel over your head and lean over the steam. You can be near it, you know, getting that steam into your face, but not where you're like literally over the boiling water. Um, finding ways to, you know, use this. Um, of course, using a cool vaporizer is always good. Um, so these are just a few th things, you know, there's much more that you can go in and look um, and read. And like I said, I will put that in the link below or the description below. And if I can find anything else, I will put that in the um, description as well. I hope that this answers some of your questions and gives you some ideas of some relief, things that you can do to help um, relieve that congestion because I know it's the worst. Uh, and again, I hope it answers the questions about medications and allergies. So again, just to recap, anything with the decongestant or pseudoephedrine, you would not want to take because that would affect your milk supply. Um, as long as it has doesn't have anything with the decongestant in it or the pseudoephedrine, it should be safe. 
and the best time to take any type of medication would be right after you've nursed. Um, so those are just some of the tips that I have for you. I hope that this video helps you guys. Give it a thumbs up if it does, and if you like the video, don't for hit, forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.